Right, so we're going to be doing a quick look at the structure of DNA and we're also going to be uh, looking a little bit at the purpose of DNA. Right, so DNA is made up of um, a number of repeating units known as nucleotides and uh, nucleotide is made up of three main bits. We have our cells of five carbon sugar. Now, Five carbon sugar, what it's talking about there is it's actually, strangely enough, got five carbons in it, but it's also a deoxyribose sugar, which means it's also got an oxygen here, and there's also an OH group over here. Um, and we have the five carbons one, two, three, four, and then we also have another carbon just here. Okay, and you, you'll see why that's important later. This also has a phosphate group and a nitrogenous base. Now, there's four kinds of nitrogenous base. You've got an A, a T, a G, and a C. So all these nucleotides are exactly the same as far as the phosphate and the carbon sugar part is concerned, but the bases can be different, and there's four different versions. Right, so how do we stick them all together? Well, what happens is the phosphates and the sugars are binded together or bonded together um, in a long chain. So what is formed is what we call a phosphate sugar backbone, as you can see there. Now, DNA is actually double-stranded, so the other strand is bonded to the this strand um, by what we call complementary base pairing, forming what look like rungs of a ladder, where an A always bonds to a T, or an adenine to a thymine, and a guanine to a cytosine, or a G to a C. So what we end up with is a double strand of DNA um, with the uh, rungs of the ladder oops the rungs of the ladder formed from the base pairing of the nitrogenous bases and the sides of the ladder formed from the sugar phosphate backbone <clears throat> now you'll also probably notice that um, they seem to be one seems to be the right way up and the other one seems to be the wrong way upside down. So um, the reason for that is going back to that numbering system with the carbons. Um, you'll notice that there's the oxygen there. We've got one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, four carbon, and carbon number five just here. Okay. So we've got that, and we've actually named the different ends of the uh, strands um, either 5 prime or 3 prime, or in this case 3 prime and 5 prime. And what that relates to is the carbon that the phosphate is bonded to. So this one here, this phosphate is bonded to carbon 5, so this is why this end is the 5 prime end, whereas this phosphate, the lowest phosphate, will be bonded to the third carbon on that chain. So that phosphate will end up down there and then the, the chain will continue down below the screen. Um, and that's why that is known as the uh, three prime end. Um, so that means that the two strands are running in opposite directions to each other. And um, we call that anti-parallel. So DNA is anti-parallel. Okay, so uh, a brief thing on the point of DNA, or why the heck we have DNA. So uh, one point, as far as DNA is concerned, is the ability to carry the genetic message on from your parents to you, and then from you to your kids, and from your kids to your kids' kids, and so on. So that basically means that um, DNA almost, in a sense, makes you immortal, because a piece of you is living on for as long as the human race basically lives on. 
Um, it carries all the information that codes for an organism's traits. So it means that uh, uh, within your DNA, um, you have sections which code for traits, and we call those sections genes. And um, each gene will code for a feature, for example, like eye color, um, blood type, and so on. So that means that if there's any change in that information being carried on the DNA, that means that it could result in a change in the trait that it codes for. Uh, and uh, I'll sort of demonstrate how that can happen soon. But first you'll actually need to know how is that information actually carried on the DNA. And it's all to do with these bases. So um, these bits here. Basically, you'll notice that Remember I mentioned that um, there's four different kinds of bases. Now, they are placed into different orders, okay? And each group, okay, we've got groups of, what happened there? Groups of three, and we call those groups of three triplets. And each triplet codes for what we call an amino acid. And amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. And our body is made up of lots and lots of different kinds of proteins. So um, the order of these things, if we change them, it means that we're going to change the amino acid that it codes for. And if we change the amino acid it codes for, it changes the building blocks for the protein, which means that the protein is changed. And if the protein is changed, then that can result in changes in traits. Okay, so it's all to do with the order of these things. They're like uh, the alphabet, I guess, of the DNA code. So, you know, it is a code, so it needs to mean something, it needs to be able to be deciphered. Um, and uh, just like the English language, um, which also consists of an alphabet that we can put letters into different orders, and which means something, uh, which I'm going to show soon. Right, <clears throat> so. As you can see here, I've got a sentence, the vet cat sat, all right? Well, what I've done is I've put the alphabet of the English language, and I've taken the letters, and I've put them in an order that means something, okay? And that's exactly the same with the order of bases. They're in a particular order, and that order of bases actually means something. Um, and all it takes is <clears throat> a small change in that order, and suddenly the whole meaning has changed. Just like if you change something in the DNA, um, it could result in a different amino acid, which changes basically what that section of DNA means or what it codes for. So um, in this situation, we go from this to this. And as you can see, that those two sentences mean two very different things. All right, back to the structure, back to the structure of DNA. All right, so where is it found? Well, we find our DNA inside the nucleus of a cell. So here's the nucleus. There's the chromosomes inside the nucleus, which I'm pointing at now. That's the nucleus there. And the nucleus is found inside a cell and this thing here this thing which I'm circling, that is a cell, in case you weren't sure. Um, <clears throat> now, these structures inside there, these things, these little things here, there are chromosomes, okay? And they're made up of DNA, so chromosomes are DNA, they're just tightly coiled up links of DNA. Now, how is it done? Well, we start here, this is the bit that we recognize, that we've seen before, that's our double strand of DNA. Here's our sugar phosphate back backbone and in the middle there we've got our nitrogenous bases. Now DNA is twisted up into a structure known as a double helix um, and that structure is then wrapped around some proteins known as histones. Those this wrapped up section is then also coiled over here and that those coils are then coiled again so what we end up with is a very very tightly coiled structure so <clears throat> if you think about the size of a cell 
I mean, if you just look at your hand, you can't actually see individual cells with the naked eye because they're so small. Yet, we can fit, using this way of coiling the DNA into a chromosome, we can fit in a human cell about 1.8 meters of DNA. Okay, so if you stretch out the DNA in a cell, put all the chromosomes, you stretch them all out in a long line, you get about 1.8 meters of DNA. And all of that, because it's all so tightly coiled into these chromosome structures, can actually fit inside the nucleus of the cell. So it's pretty tightly packed in there. Now, this particular chromosome here is in its dividing state. That's normally only when it's visible. Um, and it consists of that whole thing is the chromosome. And the chromosome has two different halves to it. Here we go. And we call them chromatids. So that's a chromatid there. And that one over there, that's a chromatid as well. And those chromatids are held together in the middle by the centromere, which is this thing in the middle here, this bit in the middle here. That's the centromere. Okay? And it's held together like that. Okay? Right, well, thank you very much for listening to my babbling, and um, hopefully it was useful. Thank you.